Greetings from the Nerd Cave in South Dakota, the Black Hills. Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor, with another little Murphy's Nemeth Neme <laughs> Nemesis tale for you. This is probably the weirdest thing I ever did in ham radio. What you hear in the background is radio teletype. Plain old Bado radio teletype. Well, in the early 1970s, when I lived at my parents' house in Minnesota in the fallout shelter, I set up a radio teletype station. It was one of the weirdest ways to get on radio teletype. Probably the weirdest contraption I've ever heard of, but it worked. That's the cool thing, it worked. And I remember having a round table, a chat, as it were, amongst myself, a ham radio operator on the east coast of the United States, another ham radio operator somewhere down in Florida or Georgia, somewhere down there, and then another one in South Africa. We were all talking kind of like our own little chat room. Now, you know, all these kids do all this stuff on the internet. I was doing it in the early 1970s without any infrastructure whatsoever. There was no internet, nothing to go down, no hackers, no nothing. Except us ham radio operators. And now, I'm going to try and describe this contraption, this, what do you call it, a Rube Goldberg or a kludge? It was really strange. Hope you enjoy. Here is a block diagram of my old radio teletype station circa 1971-1972, somewhere thereabouts, when I was a junior or senior in high school, then abouts. Drake R4A receiver. Drake T4X Transmitter, HAL ST5 Radio Teletype Terminal Unit, which I built from a kit provided by a company back then called HAL Devices in Urbana, Illinois, and later they became HAL Communications. I actually worked at ARRL headquarters with a guy who ended up at uh, HAL Communications. He was from Urbana, Champaign, Urbana, Illinois area. That's a nice town there, Champaign, Illinois. I've been through there. It's a kind of a neat place. Anyway, this was the old, I built it from a kit and put it in a beautiful wooden cabinet with a wonderful brushed aluminum panel. I went to town on that and made a beautiful little unit out of it. The audio came out of the R4A and went into this HAL ST5, which then decoded and encoded the radio teletype signals. Uh, the encoded signals went back and I actually tapped into the VFO of the T4X directly. I did not feed it with audio frequency shift keying into the microphone input, which they do mostly nowadays, I actually produced a frequency shift with a capacitor and a little transistor, a little circuit I built myself to cause the VFO to shift frequency by 170 hertz so I could get radio teletype Bordeaux. So that was the core of this station. And of course, then the teleprinter which was an old Western Union, and I believe it was called a Model 102. You had to feed it with paper that had these perforations along the side, along strips that you had to tear off, and it was folded like, accordion, like an accordion, and it came out of a box, and it went through this massive teleprinter, which was probably weighed three, 400 pounds. And it sat on the floor of that fallout shelter, uh, that tile over concrete and dented that tile despite the fact that it was right on the concrete. That thing was a massive monster. It survived a fire. The building was burnt to the ground and the old 102 survived it and they gave it to me for nothing. 
and I hooked it up and made a radio teletype station out of it. Could only go 60 words a minute, and uh, you, the, it had a mechanical keyboard, and it would literally force you to go no more than 60 words a minute. The mechanical stuff in there would prevent you from being able to type ahead of, of yourself. So this is the way that, that, that's the circuit. Now, it worked great. It was kind of a clued job manually. It didn't have any automatic switching like they do nowadays. Well, nowadays you have to click on something with a mouse most of the time. So it wasn't really a whole lot harder than that. It was an old station. These were tube type radios. This was a solid state uh, terminal unit, they called it. Not a computer, just a little interface. Then, in order to produce what they called a brag tape, and that, came, that was in most uh, machines, they had something called a reperf. It was a piece of, um, it, it had a long strip of paper with weird looking little holes in it, kind of like a stock ticker tape. And it'd go through this thing and, and you could punch holes in it and encode your brag tape on there. Well, I couldn't do that, so I literally put this thing offline, put it in spot mode, transmitted into a dummy load, and produced my own brag tape by recording the audio that came into the R4A onto an old tube-type Panasonic reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder at seven and one-half inches per second. You remember that stuff? It, it was really, you know, and Oops, I, I hope I didn't bump that too bad. Well, I think it's still aimed pretty good. Let's check it out. Yep. So anyway, I'm just going to keep on going. I'm not doing this for money anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And neither was this. Because the speed that came out of there was only what I could type in. Until someone offered to record my brag onto their... Uh, reperf machine. My teleprinter didn't have a reperf. They offered to record it on their reperf, so they got a paper tape of my brag tape at their station, then they played it back to me through the R4A, and I recorded it at full speed, and that became my brag tape. And by golly, that thing worked. The audio came in, it was recorded, the audio went out into the ST5, which encoded it somehow or another, I don't remember exactly how, but it did it, and keyed that VFO for the uh, Drake T4X. So in that way, I was all able to get on Bado radio teletype from my old ham radio station in Minnesota, whose call letters were WA0. OKV. I don't know if anyone has that call today, but in 1977, when I took the only job I ever applied for, a job as an operator at W1AW, I moved to Farmington, Connecticut, worked in Newington, got a vanity call sign. They had begun to issue those just right about then. And that's how I became proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. W1 Good Vibrations? <laughs> you tell me. Stan Jibalisco, signing off from the Black Hills of South Dakota, still W1GV. Until next time, so long.